All right, calculus students, today we're going to do some free response questions on derivative interpretation. Uh, before we do, I'm going to show you something. I, I've had a lot of time to sit out on the patio and just watch the birds on the bird feeder and just ponder our COVID world. And as I'm looking out there, I look out there and I see this, this weird looking blue bird. And I'm like, what kind of bird is that? And it turns out, I look it up in the bird books and on a bird online, it's undoubtedly an indigo bunting. And ordinarily, you're probably thinking, get out of here with your bird stories. But you're trapped at home, too. And you're like, probably now, hey, I'd like to see an indigo bunting. And so that's what I'll do. I'll just show you. I'll show you what the indigo bunting looks like. Looks like that. And uh, yeah, it's so blue. So blue with some little black on its wings right there. It's a very proud, proud bird. And uh, it doesn't it doesn't know why we're all staying inside. It has no idea. There it is. Look how happy it looks. Okay, so enough about the indigo bunting. And let's do a little free response. You'll see like this has got four parts to it. And three parts are super easy, but um, the rest of the country not very good at these. And remember, they are picky about the way that you state your answers, so we'll go over that. And then the last one is the hardest part, and it is where most of the points are. So let's uh, take a look at what this says. It says we've got a picture of f prime right here. Let's be, uh, the graph of f prime, the derivative of f, is shown up above, and it's a line segment. You can see the line segment in a circle right there. And then f of 0 is equal to 3. Ooh, at some point, we're going to have to use that f of 0 is equal to 3. But this is our classic picture of f prime that we're looking at right here. Classic picture of f prime. So the first part says, over what intervals is f increasing? Justify your answer. Remember what you're supposed to be thinking when you look at this. You're supposed to be thinking, uh, here's positive f prime. All the values of f prime are positive, so that's positive slope. Here's negative values of f prime, so that's negative slope. And here's some more um, negative values of f prime, so that's more negative slope. You're asking where it's increasing, so we want to know where the positive slope is, and that's going to be right here, from negative 3 to negative 2. From negative 3 to negative 2. And we want to give a description of why we chose that. This description must start with the graph that we are looking at, which in this case is f prime. And I say f prime is, you think of the one word answer that, that means this. And if you thought positive, then you are correct. f prime is positive. Yep, very, very easy to do, but it really needs to be stated just like this. And double check to make sure it's f and not g or h or something else. And that's exactly what it is. It's f prime. So we're good. Let's try the next one. It says, find the x coordinate of each point of inflection on the graph. Justify your answer. This is equally as easy. Points of inflection are questions about f double prime. f double prime is the slope of this graph. So for a point of inflection, we are looking for the slope of this graph to switch from positive to negative or negative to positive. So here we've got the slope being negative and then it switches to positive. So x equals zero is gonna be a point of inflection. And I'm going to write x equals 0. And then I'm going to go ahead and give my reason. My reason must start with f prime, the graph that we're looking at. So I'll write that, f prime. And what is f prime doing? It's switching from right here from decreasing to increasing. So f prime switches from and I'm going to write it out just like you were on the AP exam so we don't take any shortcuts from decreasing uh, to increasing. And sometimes there'll be more than one that switches in the same way. And so you might have two answers that have the same, the same uh, explanation. Okay, and then we'll just keep continuing on. And you can see here we're increasing and then decreasing. Ah, there's another place where it switches right there at 2. So x is equal to 2. Of course, it's a little annoying, but it switches in the other 
direction this time. And so I want to write out a separate explanation so I make sure that I get full credit. And this time it's switching from increasing to decreasing our reason why we chose it. And we've got it. Very easy, right? Remember F double prime is just the slope of the F prime graph. And so we're just looking for where the slope switches. Okay, let's look at this last one. It says, find the equation of the line tangent to the graph at zero comma three. And we know for a tangent line, we need two things. We need a point and um, so nice of them that they just actually just gave us the point. It's zero comma three. And then we want the slope. And of course the slope is just what is F prime at that point. So we're looking for what is F prime at this X value of zero. And so we'll just go to our graph and we'll just look that up and we'll see what it is. So let's see at zero, the F prime is negative two. Now, of course, this is a sharp corner, but we don't care about that. It's not asking us anything about that. So um, we'll just read the Y value for F prime right off of this. And this is negative two. Um, so now we can just write our point slope form. It's Y minus three is equal to negative two and X minus zero. And there it is, very, very easy. Very, very easy question to do. I think this one's only worth one point, as you can imagine, because it is so simple right there. But many people will miss this because they, they can't get the slope off of here. You might be asking, well, when does the sharp corner actually matter? The sharp corner at matters if I were to ask the slope of this graph. So if I asked you, what is F double prime doing at zero? You would say F double prime is undefined. Of course, you're not doing F double prime for this one right here, and that's why we're able to just write down the Y value, the F prime value, because that's what we wanted. Okay, that brings us to the next part. It says find F of negative three and F of four. Show work that leads to our answers. Now, this is where this zero is gonna be our like, our key spot that we're actually gonna start on. So um, we're gonna say, okay, I wanna go from F prime which is what this is, to f. So that's going to be the integral starting at this key spot. So here we go. Let's find f of negative 3 first. We'll say, OK, we'll start with our key spot, which is at, at 0. And that's going to be 3. And plus, then we'll integrate from 0 to wherever we want to go, which is negative 3. Notice how these two match. We're starting at 0. And at 0, we have an f value of 3 and then we're moving to negative three. We'll be integrating this f prime of x dx. Hey, whatever this is, is gonna give us the correct answer. Notice that this integral is upside down. We're gonna to to pay particular attention to this as we, as we calculate our integral, our area here. So let's see, let's go up and, and, and label some areas on here. This is two times two, which is four, but it's a triangle. So divided by two is gonna be two. So this area is two. And then this area is one by one, so one times one divided by two is a half. So there's what our area is. Um, so now we're gonna do this, but we need to be very careful and make sure as we do it that we concern ourselves with our, our, um, our fact that our integral is upside down. So this is ordinarily below the axis, um, so that would be negative, but because this integral is upside down, it's going to be um, it's going to be a positive two right there, and then this one is ordinarily a positive one half, but again we're moving backwards, so this will be a negative one half. So this is what we end up getting. So two minus a half is one and a half. Sets so three plus one and a half, and that's four and a half or better yet, nine halves. So final answer on this one, nine halves. Hey, this is pretty easy, but it is, um, you know, if you're not careful, it's easy to get this, uh, the sign on this backwards and mess up your answer. So remember, this is below the axis, but the integral is going backwards. It's upside down integral. 
So I take the opposite of the area. Area was ordinarily negative two, so I took positive two. This one was above the axis, but I'm going backwards, so I took negative one half. You'll see the same kind of thing on this one. Okay, so let's try the second one, f of four. All right, so we're gonna do this second one, which is the trickier of the two, and it's f of four that we're finding, and it's gonna start off with our key number, which is three, and we're gonna be adding to it the integral from zero to four. Notice again, these two match, f of zero is three, and we're moving to, um, to four of this f prime of x dx, and that'll give us our answer. Now, notice that this entire area is below the axis, so I'm gonna go f of four equals three, and it's gonna be minus whatever this area is. And this area is a little tricky, because what we wanna do is get just this area right here. And remember, we're subtracting because it's below the axis right here, so the whole thing is below. So the entire area is gonna be this block, and this is four by two, so four times two is eight. And then we'll subtract out the little semicircle, which is gonna be uh, one half pi r squared. So this part is one half pi times whatever the radius is, and you can see that the radius is two, so this is one half pi r squared, two squared. So let's put that in there. Well, two squared is four times a half is two, so that's two pi. That's two pi. And then we'll just figure out what this is. Well, negative negative is gonna be two pi. And then three minus five, or three minus eight is negative five. And we get two pi minus five. Hey, two pi minus, two pi minus five is our answer to this one. Uh, very, very tricky if you're not careful and just do this thing nice and methodically. When you see it worked out, it's nice and easy, but many, many, many um, negative mistakes are made in this part if you're not careful. Okay, you're gonna have a problem that's similar but not identical to do, do uh, for this. You can see that it is asking for f of negative six and f of five um, from this graph. I think it's a little bit easier because it doesn't have um, as difficult of an area as the one that we just did, but similar to the last part that we did. This is where are the intervals increasing? Hey, that is exactly like what we just did. This one is an absolute minimum. And so here you'll have to do a race of four values, two of them you've already done right here. And then this last one you're asking for F double prime. So it's asking about the slope of the graph that you are looking at all parts you should be able to do. You're going to turn this in and then I'll either make a video or show the answers to this problem after the due date so that you can check to make sure that you've done it right. If you really need to see it, you can attend the Zoom session on um, Wednesday afternoon. And um, at that point, you can, um, you can have me work any part of it that you weren't able to do yourself. All right, good luck.